Welcome XCC family. We have some exciting news about plug and play on how they selected the XCC network to launch an enterprise RWA tokenization accelerator. We'll dive into that. Also, we're going to go ground up from Web 1, Web 2, Web 3 to DLT and tokenization to help give people a better understanding of the technology. We're also going to dive into some more topics. So if you're an XTC fan, you're not going to want to miss this. Let's go ahead and roll it. Now, if you're serious about purchasing a hardware wallet, in the description are links for an amazing discount. Let's begin with a quick wise quote. Remember, whoever is trying to bring you down is already below you. This is from Zayed K. Abdelnor. Now, there might be listeners and viewers who are watching. They might be new to the space, jumping into the space, and you know, there's a lot of information to take in. They're hearing about all these different blockchains, but it's good to know from ground level, what is Web3, what is DLT, and how tokenization is being harnessed by DLT. So this is an excellent document. This is realizing the future vision of a financial ecosystem. So Web 1 marks the beginning of the internet era where enterprises primarily use it to disseminate information to their end users. During this phase, static websites and digital forms were the main tools for collecting user information. Although these initial efforts laid the foundation for critical internet protocols and standards, the interaction between users and applications remained limited. Even the most interactive forms required manual processing of data on the back end, highlighting nascent state of internet technology. Web 2, here we are to Web 2, it brought about a transformative shift in how users interacted with the internet. This era empowered users to engage in dynamic and complex activities such as context creation, social networking, and e-commerce. Web 2 enabled online grocery shopping, for example, video conferencing, ride hailing services, and streamlining entertainment, revolutionizing daily life. However, this increased interactivity often required users to share personal data with various enterprises, raising concerns about data privacy and control over personal information. That is the truth there. Web3 presents the next evolutionary step, promising a more user-centric and decentralized internet experience. At its core, Web3 leverages blockchain technology to offer users enhanced control over their digital interactions. Key components of Web3 include blockchain-enabled cryptographic securities, digital assets, and smart contracts. These elements create a trustless environment where interactions do not rely on intermediaries, thus fostering greater transparency and efficiency. Now on to distributed ledger technology and tokenization. DLT and tokenization are reshaping the landscape of asset management and digital transactions. DLT, a decentralized system for recording and validating data across network of computers, offers a transparent and immutable ledger. Without the need for a central authority, blockchain, the most prominent form of DLT, has gained widespread attention for its role in cryptocurrencies, but its potential extends far beyond digital currencies. We have tokenization, it enabled by DLT, involves representing real-world assets as digital tokens on a blockchain. This process introduces unprecedented levels of liquidity, fractional ownership, and programmability to assets that were previously illiquid or difficult to trade. The convergence of DLT and tokenization is paving the way for more efficient, transparent, and accessible markets across various sectors. From real estate, fine art, to intellectual property and financial instruments, Here's some wonderful news for XDC fans. Check this out. Plug and Play selects XDC Network to launch an enterprise RWA tokenization accelerator. How cool is that? Plug and Play has announced a new accelerator focused on real-world asset tokenization on the XDC Network. This initiative is designed to drive innovation and accelerate the development of advanced RWA applications within the blockchain space. The open call for the RWA accelerator begins in December 2024, which is a few months. Up to 10 startups will join a three-month program starting in March of 2025 that focuses on RWA tokenization projects with targeted support and resources. The program will culminate in June of 2025 at Plug and Play Silicon Valley Summit, where startups will present their projects to Plug and Play and its network of investors and stakeholders.
The great news is XTC Network has a strong foothold in the RWA tokenization space. Anybody who's been following XTC Network knows that. By establishing an enterprise RWA accelerator alongside plug and play, the network will gain clear strategic advantage that will greatly expand its reach and impact in RWA applications, says Billy Siebel, XTC Foundation Executive Director. We are energized by plug and play selection and onboarding process and look forward to working with high caliber candidates they attract to this program. XCC Network is known for its cutting edge blockchain technology and robust ecosystem in global trade and finance. The network has achieved significant milestones. Integration with Securitize, support for tokenized treasuries. Uh, we have trade finance participation, involvement with ITFA, infrastructure support uh, from Deutsche Telekom, and you already know a lot of that. Anybody who's been following the channel. So let's go and see what plug and play is about. So about plug and play, it is a leading innovation platform connecting startup corporations, venture capital firms, universities, and government agencies. How about that? Headquartered in Silicon Valley, they're present in 60 plus locations across five continents. They state that we offer corporate innovation programs and help our corporate partners in every stage of their innovation journey from education to execution. We also organize startup acceleration programs that have built an in-house VC to drive innovation across multiple industries where we've invested in hundreds of successful companies, including Dropbox, Guardian Health, Honey, Lending Club, N26, PayPal, and Rappi. For more information, you can check out their website right there. And of course, we know about the XCC network and how awesome of a blockchain it is. It truly boggles my mind that XCC is not listed on Binance yet. That's just strange. I mean, it's listed on Uphold in the United States, but not Binance. Comtech Gold Post, let's turn up the volume on XTC as one of the most enduring and resilient blockchain. XTC boasts a powerful community and cutting edge technology. Let's briefly recap. The XTC network is a hybrid blockchain. It combines public and private network features. It has near zero gas fees. It's cost effective as cost effective transactions. It's lightning fast with ultra quick transaction speeds. It's enterprise ready. It's perfect for large scale applications and it has a strong community. XDC deserves a spot on Binance. This is posted from XDC Network News. XDC transactions compared to some uh, competitors. Here we go. XDC Network is the leading layer one blockchain for digital trade, revolutionizing the trade finance space with live features for paperless trade document management and trade finance solutions via TradeFinex and XCC Trade Network. XCC is the most cost efficient platform for handling trade documents as supported by data and trade trust. What is trade trust, you might ask? Trade trust is a framework built on open station standard developed in collaboration with IMDA and GovTech Singapore, designed to ensure the authenticity and integrity of digital trade documents. Below is an estimated breakdown or off to the side here, is an estimated breakdown of gas and cost efficiency across three blockchains. You have Ethereum, Polygon, and XCC Network. Let's zoom in and check it out. Here's the estimated cost for transactions. It's a breakdown of gas and costs involved when interacting with the contracts. All right, so this is gonna give us an estimate. It can vary slightly is what it was saying. So variable documents right here. As you can see, XTC just blows the competitors out of the water. I mean, it's not even comparable. Here you have estimated gas, USD on Ethereum, $11.24. Polygon is much better, but you're still looking at about three cents right there. And But look at this, look at XTC, 0.00000724. I mean, you wouldn't even really notice that. Insurance of document, Ethereum, 49 cents, about 50 cents. It's not bad at all, but we could do better than that. You have Polygon, which really isn't that bad. But look at XDC Network, 0.00000313. That's, that's incredible. You have Revoke Document, another about 50 cents right there with Ethereum USD. Polygon, not bad at all, but look at XDC. Why wouldn't you want to use the XDC Network? The idea is practically have no cost at all. You know, even those slight figures over time will add up. And a lot of these big businesses that are going to be doing volumes, they know that. So transferable records. Here you have uh, XCC Network, 
just blowing the competition out of the water again. USD on Ethereum, a little over three bucks. I tell you what, it's a lot better than it used to be, but still, there's that, there's that fee factor, right? No fees. That should be the goal. Hey, there you have XCC Network just blowing the competition like there's no, there's no comparison. And you can see the issue of document, transfer ownership, transfer holdership, nominate ownership, endorse ownership. I mean, the list goes on. Again, Ethereum is much better, but in the long run, you don't want any fees. You want practically no fees. Polygon is much better, much, much better. But XCC Network is the future. In my humble opinion, it's the future. Why hasn't tokenization taken off in the retail payment space? That's a good question. Let's go into this piece from Harvey L. Now, before I dive in, I want to give my two cents worth. I believe it's it's clear to say because the regulatory certainty is not here yet. You know, all these financial institutions, they don't know the clear rules of the road, but there's more to it than that. And we've just received some great news about MetaMask. So blockchain may be fast and cheap, but tokenized real retail payments face three big hurdles regulatory restrictions, exorbitant fees, and bad UX. So let me illustrate with an example, he states. Yesterday, payment powerhouse MasterCard and crypto wallet giant MetaMask launched a crypto debit card that can tap into MasterCard's merchant network as well as MetaMask 30 million users. It is supposed to allow MetaMask users to spend their crypto across all POS or point of sale that accept MasterCard. Great news, but the devil is always in the details or the lack thereof. Number one, geographic regulatory restriction. As I was stating, I think that's the major factor right there. Let's continue to see what he has to say. There are 30 million monthly MetaMask users, but the debit card rollout is only available to UK and EU MetaMask users. So it's not great for the US users to miss out, but also not disastrous. If only 30% of MetaMask users are UK and EU based, if they all adopted the debit card, it would bring meaningful market size to the product but are they likely to adopt it? Prohibitive FX costs. Two, the funding currency for debit card is in USD or ETH, but the spending currency is GBP and EUR. The FX exchange rate is key here, and crypto payment companies have traditionally been terrible at providing competitive FX rates for users. For example, MetaMask already has a built-in swap function that users can use to swap between tokenized USD and other currencies. The rate is significantly three times worse than direct swap on exchanges, making the function unusable. It's not clear from the announcement who will be the liquidity provider for FX exchanges needed to make a debit card work, nor will the rates be competitive versus market alternative. Number three, funding restriction. On the surface, the announcement seems to suggest any crypto money in MetaMask wallet can be used to fund debit cards, but that is not the case. Users have to move their funds to a specific blockchain called Linea, built by MetaMask parent company Consensus, to make the fund spendable. This is like saying you have to move your money to JP Morgan in order to fund your debit card. So stop right there. You know, these are the hurdles that we're getting through. Remember, this is like the dial up stages of the internet. With, with blockchain technology. All this stuff is gonna dramatically change. It's gonna be much more user-friendly. This may be a great tactic to boost Alenia's money pile, currently sitting at 50 million and ranking 30th out of all blockchain networks, but it is a clunky way to onboard users. Now, do you think this product will see wide adoption? Leave your comments down below. Leave them down below in this video. What do you think? I'm gonna give my two cents worth. I believe that it's a great thought it's a great concept there's going to be users but i don't think it's the it's the killer app i don't think it's the icing on the cake i don't think that it's going to make mainstream adoption as some of these other technologies have hardly any fees creating some kind of debit card with that now something more user-friendly and practical is a prepaid visa card with xdc you have different service providers like garda Gardarian, Cryptarium, and Globions. You can top up your debit card with XDC cryptocurrency and spend worldwide. Now, depending upon where you live in the world, even though it says worldwide, I believe it's EUR. So as far as United States customer, Uphold is working. I think they had a program, but they're working on a new card program in the near future, it states, where you can spend card. And one of their cryptocurrencies on Uphold is XDC. <laughs>